My girlfriend returned the ring on the day I proposed to her saying that she wanted it to be a grand event. I decided not to marry a self-absorbed and materialistic woman. I, 29 male, have been dating my girlfriend Samantha, 28 female, for the past three years. We met at my best friend Jake's birthday party and I still remember the moment she walked in. Samantha was wearing a stunning red dress that made her stand out in the crowd. Her confident walk and shining smile caught everyone's attention, especially mine. I've always been more of an introvert, preferring small gatherings to big parties. That night I was nursing a drink in the corner, feeling a bit overwhelmed by the crowd. Samantha approached me, introduced herself, and we started chatting. Her intelligence and charm drew me in immediately. We spent the entire night talking, laughing, and discovering we had a lot in common. Our first date was at a charming Italian restaurant downtown. Samantha arrived fashionably late, apologizing profusely but explaining how her important work meeting ran over. She worked in marketing for a big fashion brand, a job she was clearly passionate about. Throughout dinner she entertained me with stories of her latest campaign and the celebrities she'd met. I was in awe of her exciting life. As our relationship progressed I found myself falling deeper in love. Samantha was unlike anyone I'd ever dated before. She was ambitious, outgoing, and always seemed to know exactly what she wanted. Coming from a small town and working as a software developer, I sometimes felt like I was living in a whole new world with her. About six months into our relationship Samantha invited me to a work party. It was a black tea event, and I was nervous about fitting in with her glamorous colleagues. Samantha helped me pick out a suit and even gave me a crash course in wine tasting so I wouldn't embarrass her. At the event she introduced me to everyone as her brilliant boyfriend. I felt proud but also a little uncomfortable with all the attention. It was at this social event that I first noticed Samantha's tendency to exaggerate. She told her co-workers about our recent weekend trip to the beach, but in her version we stayed at a five-star resort instead of the modest Airbnb we'd actually booked. When I quietly corrected her later, she laughed it off, saying, Oh honey, no one wants to hear about a boring beach house. It's all about the story. As time went on I started noticing more instances of Samantha decorating the truth or steering conversations to focus on herself. At first I brushed it off as harmless. After all, everyone likes to present their best self, right? But it started to wear on me when even our private moments became fodder for her social media presence. For our first anniversary I planned a romantic picnic in the park where we had our first kiss. I spent hours preparing her favorite foods and even learned to play her favorite song on guitar to surprise her. Samantha seemed touched, but within minutes of arriving she was more focused on setting up the perfect Instagram shot than enjoying our time together. She made me rearrange the picnic spread multiple times until it looked just right for her photos. Despite these small irritations I was still head over heels for Samantha. She had a way of making me feel special, telling me how lucky she was to have found such a caring boyfriend. But these compliments often came with a caveat. She'd say things like, you're so sweet babe, not as successful as my ex, but so much nicer, or I'm so glad I gave you a chance. You're not usually my type but you've really grown on me. As our relationship hit the two-year mark, I started thinking about proposing. Samantha had been dropping hints about marriage for months, showing me pictures of enormous engagement rings and extravagant weddings. I wanted to make it special for her so I spent months planning the perfect proposal. I chose a romantic restaurant overlooking the city, the same place we had celebrated her big promotion the year before. I hired a string quartet to play her favorite song, arranged for the chef to prepare a custom menu of all her favorite dishes, and even got the restaurant to agree to a special light show for the big moment. The ring I chose was a beautiful diamond solitaire, not as large as the one Samantha had shown me but it was the best I could afford without going into debt. The night of the proposal arrived, and everything was going according to plan. Samantha looked stunning in a new dress she'd bought for the occasion, she always seemed to know when something special was happening. As dessert arrived I got down on one knee and poured my heart out, telling Samantha how much I loved her, and asking her to marry me. Her response left me speechless, and not in a good way. Samantha looked at the ring, then at me and said, Oh honey, is this it, I expected something more grand. You know how hard I am to impress, you'll need to do better than this if you want me to say yes. I was crushed. I had put so much thought and effort into the proposal, but it wasn't enough for her. Samantha suggested I try again with a more elaborate setup, maybe a flash mob in Times Square or sky riding over the beach. She even hinted that the ring wasn't expensive enough, showing me a picture on her phone of a ring her friend had recently received that was at least twice the size of the one I had chosen. Despite my hurt feelings I decided to give it another shot. I spent the next few months planning an over-the-top proposal that would meet Samantha's expectations. I dipped into my savings and even sold my car to finance the event. I rented out an entire art gallery, filled it with thousands of roses, and hired a famous chef to prepare a gourmet meal. I even arranged for a minor celebrity Samantha admired to make an appearance. When the big day arrived, Samantha seemed impressed at first. But as I got down on one knee again she stopped me. Wait, she said, is this being recorded? I want to make sure we get this on video so I can post it later. I was taken aback but called over the photographer I had hired. Samantha then proceeded to direct the proposal, telling me where to stand and how to hold the ring. It felt like the whole thing was just for show. In the end, she did say yes, but her immediate response was to grab her phone and start live streaming to show off the ring and the elaborate setup. She barely even looked at me or acknowledged the meaning behind the gesture. That night, as Samantha was busy posting photos and bragging to her friends, I had a moment of clarity. I realized that this wasn't about our love or our future together. It was all about appearances and showing off. I started to question whether Samantha truly cared about me or if I was just a prop in her carefully curated life. Over the next few weeks I tried to talk to Samantha about my concerns. I suggested we take a step back and focus on the emotional aspects of our relationship rather than the materialistic side. But Samantha dismissed my worries, saying I was being too sensitive and that I should be grateful to have someone like her. Every time I brought up the issue Samantha would turn it around on me. She'd say things like, do you know how many guys would kill to be with me? You should consider yourself lucky. 
Or, I'm way out of your league, you know, you'll never find anyone better than me. I love Samantha but I'm starting to realize that maybe we're not as compatible as I thought. Her constant need for validation and materialism is exhausting. I don't want to spend the rest of my life trying to impress someone who's never satisfied. So, Reddit, Ada for considering breaking up with my fiancé over this? Am I overreacting? Or are these legitimate concerns? I could really use some outside perspective. Update 1. It's been a few weeks since my original post and I want to thank everyone for their responses. Your comments and insights really helped me gain some perspective on my situation with Samantha. After much thought and some frank conversations with my closest friends, I decided it was time to have a serious talk with Samantha about our relationship. I invited her over to my apartment on a Saturday afternoon, hoping the familiar setting would help keep things calm. I spent the morning cleaning and preparing, feeling a mix of nervousness and determination. When Samantha arrived she immediately commented on how I hadn't bought her flowers. I thought this was supposed to be a special conversation, she said with a pout. I took a deep breath, reminding myself to stay focused on the real issues. We sat down on the couch, and I started by expressing how much I cared for her. I reminisced about our first meeting at Jake's party and all the good times we'd shared. Then, gathering my courage, I laid out all my concerns. I talked about how her constant bragging made me feel insignificant, how her rejection of my first proposal hurt me deeply, and how I felt our relationship had become more about appearances than genuine connection. To my surprise Samantha initially seemed receptive. She listened quietly as I spoke, her expression unreadable. For a moment, I had hoped that we might be able to work things out. But as soon as I finished, her demeanor changed completely. Samantha's face twisted with anger, and she launched into an outburst. She accused me of being ungrateful and selfish, saying I had no idea how good I had it. Do you know how many of my friends are jealous of our relationship? She yelled. They all wish they had someone who worshipped them like you worship me. She went on a long rant about all the ways she had improved my life since we got together. According to her, I was lucky she even gave me the time of day, and I should be thanking her instead of criticizing her. She brought up how she had helped me pick out better clothes, introduced me to her high society friends, and even allowed me to post pictures with her on social media. The argument escalated as Samantha brought up every little mistake I'd ever made in our relationship and threw them in my face. She even went as far as to say that her ex-boyfriends were all better than me in various ways, richer, more attractive, more successful. It was like all the subtle put-downs from our entire relationship came pouring out at once. Remember when you forgot our six-month anniversary? She spat. Brad would never have done that. He once flew me to Paris just because it was a Tuesday. I tried to steer the conversation back to the real issues, but Samantha wasn't having it. She accused me of trying to change her, saying I knew who she was when we started dating. If you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve me at my best, she declared, quoting what she called her life motto. The final straw came when Samantha declared that if I really loved her, I would propose again. This time with an even bigger ring and an even more elaborate setup. She suggested I take out a loan if I couldn't afford it, saying it would be a worthwhile investment in our future. Think about it, she said, her voice taking on a manipulative sweetness. If you do this right, we could become social media famous. We could start a couple's channel, get sponsorships. Don't you want that kind of life with me? At that moment something inside me snapped. I realized that no matter what I did, it would never be enough for Samantha. Our values and goals were fundamentally different, and no amount of love could bridge that gap. I took a deep breath and told her that I thought it would be best if we ended our relationship. The words felt heavy as they left my mouth, but also strangely liberating. Samantha's reaction was explosive. She screamed, cried and threatened to tell all our friends and family that I was abusive, which is absolutely not true. She said she would ruin my reputation and make sure no one would ever want to date me again. You'll regret this, she hissed. I'll make sure everyone knows what a loser you are. Good luck finding anyone who'll put up with you after I'm done. In a panic I asked her to leave my apartment. She refused, picking up a vase and threatening to smash it if I didn't take back what I said. I had to call Jake, my best friend, to come over and help defuse the situation. It took hours, but we finally got Samantha to leave. The next few days were a whirlwind. True to her word, Samantha started spreading nasty rumors about me on social media. She twisted everything I had said and done, painting herself as the victim of a cold, unappreciative boyfriend. Some of our mutual friends even started reaching out, asking if what she was saying was true. I felt lost and overwhelmed. I knew I had made the right decision in ending things, but I hadn't expected the aftermath to be so brutal. I decided to take a break from social media and focus on healing. I'm still processing everything that happened, but I know in my heart that breaking up was the right choice. I'm trying to stay positive and focus on self-care but it's tough. I could really use some advice on how to handle the fallout from this breakup, especially with Samantha's smear campaign against me. Again, thank you all for your support. I'll update again when I have more news. Update 2. It's been about 3 months since my last update, and I want to thank everyone again for their support and advice. It's been a challenging time but I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. After Samantha's initial smear campaign, things got worse before they got better. She seemed determined to make my life as difficult as possible. It started with constant phone calls and text messages, alternating between begging me to take her back and threatening me if I didn't. I blocked her number but she would use her friend's phones or create new social media accounts to contact me. Then Samantha escalated her efforts to paint me as the villain in our breakup. She contacted my workplace, trying to get me fired by making false accusations. She claimed I had been stealing company secrets and selling them to competitors. Thankfully my boss knew me well enough to be skeptical of her claims, but it was still a stressful situation. I had to have a long conversation with HR, providing evidence of Samantha's harassment and explaining the situation. Samantha also started showing up, uninvited to places she knew I frequented. My favorite coffee shop, the gym, even outside my apartment building. It felt like she was trying to provoke a reaction from me that she could use against me. Once, she cornered me outside my apartment, crying and begging me to reconsider. When I gently but firmly asked her to. 
leave, she suddenly switched tactics and started screaming that I was assaulting her. Luckily, my neighbor witnessed the whole thing and backed me up when Samantha threatened to call the police. The situation was taking a toll on my mental health. I was constantly on edge, worried about where Samantha might pop up next or what new lie she might spread. I started seeing a therapist to help me cope with the stress and anxiety. The turning point came when some of our mutual friends started to see through Samantha's act. Her stories weren't adding up and her behavior was becoming increasingly erratic. A few of them reached out to me privately to hear my side of the story. I decided to be completely honest with them. I shared the details of our relationship, including Samantha's constant put-downs and materialistic demands. I showed them text messages and emails that backed up my side of the story. I wasn't trying to vilify Samantha just to explain why our relationship had ended. To my relief, most of our friends believed me. They started to distance themselves from Samantha, especially as her behavior became more extreme. Some of them even apologized for initially believing her lies about me. Jake, my best friend, was particularly supportive. He admitted that he had always felt something was off about Samantha but hadn't wanted to interfere in our relationship. However, Samantha didn't take this well. As she lost more friends and supporters, she became even more aggressive in her attempts to get back at me. She started leaving threatening voicemails and sending harassing text messages at all hours of the night. She created fake online profiles pretending to be me, posting offensive content to try and ruin my reputation. One night things came to a head when Samantha showed up at my apartment at 2 a.m., clearly intoxicated. She was banging on my door and yelling, waking up the entire building. When I refused to let her in, she threatened to hurt herself. Fearing for her safety and the disturbance to my neighbors, I had to call the police. After this incident, and with the encouragement of my therapist and friends, I decided to take legal action. I consulted with a lawyer friend, who advised me to file for a restraining order. It was a difficult decision, but I felt it was necessary for my safety and peace of mind. The process of getting the restraining order was stressful. I had to compile evidence of Samantha's harassment and testify in court about why I felt threatened. Samantha showed up to the hearing, playing the role of the heartbroken ex-girlfriend but thankfully the judge saw through her act. The court granted a temporary order, which helped to keep Samantha away from me. The whole experience has been eye-opening and frankly exhausting. I've learned a lot about myself and what I want in a relationship. I've also learned the importance of setting boundaries and standing up for myself. I'm slowly starting to rebuild my life. I've been focusing on my work, reconnecting with old friends, and even started volunteering at a local animal shelter. It's been therapeutic to shift my energy towards positive activities. I still have moments where I miss the good times with Samantha, but then I remind myself of all the red flags I ignored for so long. I know I made the right decision in ending our relationship, even if the aftermath was difficult. For now I'm taking things one day at a time. I'm not ready to start dating again but I'm open to the possibility in the future. I know now that I deserve someone who values me for who I am, not for what I can provide or how I make them look. Thank you all again for your support throughout this journey. Your advice and encouragement have been invaluable. I'm hopeful for what the future holds and I'm grateful for the lessons I've learned from this experience. One positive outcome from this ordeal is that I've become closer to my family. I had distanced myself from them somewhat during my relationship with Samantha. Partly because she always seemed to have something negative to say about them. She would often compare my family unfavorably to hers, criticizing everything from their jobs to their fashion choices. Now I've been spending more time with them and their unconditional support has been a real comfort. My sister Emma has been particularly supportive. She never liked Samantha but kept her opinions to herself out of respect for me. Now she's been helping me rediscover the things I used to enjoy before my relationship consumed so much of my life. We've been hiking on weekends and trying out new recipes together, simple pleasures that I had almost forgotten. At work things have finally settled down. My boss was understanding throughout the whole ordeal, and I've thrown myself into some challenging new projects. It feels good to be recognized for my skills and hard work, without someone constantly trying to overshadow my achievements. I've also been working on setting healthier boundaries in all my relationships. My therapist has been helping me understand why I allowed Samantha to treat me the way she did for so long. We've been exploring my own insecurities and working on building my self-esteem. It's a process but I'm making progress. The restraining order has been effective in keeping Samantha away, although I still hear rumors about her from time to time through mutual acquaintances. Apparently she's already dating someone new, and is back to her old habits of constant social media bragging. I feel a twinge of pity for her new partner but mostly I'm just relieved it's not me anymore. Looking back, I can see how toxic our relationship was but I don't regret the time we spent together. It taught me valuable lessons about what I want, and don't want, in a partner. I know now that true love shouldn't feel like a constant performance or competition. It should be supportive, nurturing, and bring out the best in both people. For now, I'm focusing on becoming the best version of myself. I've started taking a coding class to upgrade my skills, something Samantha always discouraged because she thought it was boring. I'm rediscovering old hobbies and exploring new ones. I've even signed up for a half marathon, something I never thought I'd do. I know the road ahead might still have some bumps but I'm facing the future with optimism. Thank you all again for your support and advice. It's been a challenging journey but I'm stronger for it. Here's to new beginnings and healthier relationships, with others and with myself.